Coach Cliff Godwin joins Steve and I go and myself as we welcome uh, Coach Cliff Godwin in following uh, a day of rest, a true day of rest with uh, Easter and all of that 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 brings. Uh, Coach, that uh, shift in the schedule this week and uh, gave you and uh, the team a day to kind of recharge, reflect, and enjoy. And uh, as you look back on the past week, give us uh, your assessment of the uh, 4-0 ECU week. Well, the, the end result it can't be any better. You know, go four and zero. I thought, uh, you know, the UNCW game. Really proud of our guys getting down four nothing um, when we've been talking about being the aggressor, but we're down four nothing. And I thought our, our guys showed a lot of poise, just to hang in there, um, not lose the game early. You know, still give us a chance to be able to come back and win. I thought our pitching staff, our bullpen, was outstanding. Um, to allow our offense to get their feet underneath them. I thought Chaz Myers getting a swing off there in the second inning was a big deal just to get the crowd back into it a little bit. Um, but super proud of our guys just the way they fought to the end and uh, were able to win that game um, after being down 4 nothing. Then you go to, obviously, weather effects to the Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You got a doubleheader. thought Trey was really good. The wind's blowing in. I thought we did enough offensively to be able to win the baseball game. Of course, um, and we expanded late, which was good. Shankman was really good, um, and then Root was not sharp, but he just managed the game and just kept us in there and hung around and ended up pitching up seven innings and only giving up I think three runs, which was awesome. And then you know Jake Hunter closing out that game, so you have a doubleheader. You know, throw four pitches, which is probably the first time in the history that I've been the head coach here. That's happened. Um, and we hung on, you know, we we're up four to three, hung on to the lead, which um, is great to continue to get in those one run games. Not necessarily fun, but it continues to prepare you for the postseason when you're able to win those one run games and then flip around to Saturday, quick turnaround. Um, and I thought, number one, our fans were awesome. You know, I put something on social media and, man, they were loud early. They got us in the game. We were able to get a lead. Um, Ethan Norby, his performance, he wasn't supposed to go that long, and he was fantastic. And then our bullpen was fantastic with Danny and uh, Richie as well. Um, and offensively, we just you were able to score, put some runs on the board, and, you know, win 7-1. to one. So uh, we definitely have more in the tank offensively, and I think that's going to continue to grow. Um as we continue to, you know, get towards the end of the season. Um, like I keep saying, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So we want to continue to get better and keep playing our best brand of baseball at the end of the season. It's another doubleheader day for Coach Godwin. He'll be with us tonight on Inside Pirate Athletics. Clonch, uh, Beal, Barini, those will be the players, too, that will join Stephen and myself uh, and Coach Godwin from uh, Tiebreakers coming up at uh, 6 o'clock. Uh, Cliff Godwin is with us here. With moving Jake Hunter uh, into the uh, second game of the doubleheader, is the role for him now out of the bullpen and the Sunday starter of the game or series, game three of a series starter more now a week-to-week decision? Well, I think we'll probably go into this weekend. I haven't talked to Coach Knight yet, but uh, TBA probably, I would say. Now, uh, Jake can still start, and we've talked to Jake about that. We feel like Jake is – a uh, Swiss Army knife from on the pitching side of things that he can pitch out of the bullpen, he can start. Um, as we have other guys, I mean, Norby was out of the bullpen at UTSA, he started. Uh, Jaden Winter had a great preseason as a starter. Um, so that's not out of the question that he could start at some points in time. So um, it's always good to have some swing guys in the bull. When I say in the bullpen that can start or starters that can throw out the bullpen, it just gives you more flexibility as coaches. Coach Ethan Norby, you touched on a little bit earlier, but obviously I think this is now seven straight scoreless innings over his last two appearances. And what's kind of been the, the difference for Ethan over these last few outings? I think it's been a couple of things. I think Coach Knight and him working on some mechanical things that he just got kind of off a tick, um, kind of over Christmas break in the preseason. It kind of continued to probably get worse and until AK caught on video and he's able to you know, I think stay on his back hip a little bit longer, which allows him to throw the to the level of velocity that he was able to throw in the fall. Um, I think that Old Dominion game was like 82, 85, which we knew some was off a little bit. But I think it was good for him at UTSA coming in and having some success. You know, it wasn't perfect, but he had some success and just letting that confidence build. I think he knew it was in there, but this game challenges you mentally as it has other guys on our team, even older guys, 
when things aren't going well, you start second guessing yourself and you just got to really dive back into the processes that have made you success, successful. So um, really proud of Norbs just staying the course and um, taking advantage of an opportunity he was given. I believe it was Friday game one when uh, you guys executed, you know, once again, the two RBI suicide squeeze. And, you know, if you're not, I think if you're not there in person, you don't really get the appreciation for the execution. You know, both guys taking off on the pitch. And uh, second time I've done that, Barini again delivering. And, uh, you know, pretty pretty awesome stuff, Coach. So just take us through the, those moments when you're trying to figure out the right time to, to put the play on and, and the execution behind it. Well, we'll probably never be able to run it again this year because uh, <laughs> there's much media attention it's gotten. Um, you know, even talking to the coach at UTSA, I mean, he's watched video and um, on it and, he, he knows we have it in our back pocket. And, um, you know, that makes me a little bit nervous uh, about, you know, even doing the squeeze. But I felt like it was a great opportunity. And, of course, Shaq does an unbelievable job of getting it down. But Bristol did a good job at second base of taking off when he needed to take off. And um, it, it's really tough to defend, um, even if you know what's coming. And I think they were screaming out of the dugout. But it's just one of those moments where if you haven't practiced it a lot, you probably can't defend it. And uh, Root maybe not uh, not being as sharp, but still going seven. Um, is he learning? You know how how to how to pitch if that makes sense. I mean, obviously last year wouldn't have been able to to navigate something like that. Uh, but it seems like he's had a couple of outings where he's maybe not had his best stuff, but he's been able to work and be effective still. Yeah, I think the the last three weeks have challenged him in different ways. I thought Liberty came out and just were like, hey, man, we're going to swing because he's around the zone. And within two pitches, there's guys uh, in the first inning on second and third, and he hadn't been punched in a mouth like that at all this year. So having to navigate that, and they really had a good approach against him to going to UTSA, giving up a run early, then kind of finding himself and – striking out five guys in a row to us not playing great defense behind them and them getting some ground ball singles and some, you know, not hard contact singles and him giving up some runs to this week. He was on short rest um, and just not, he didn't have his best command. I would say it was tough for him to, you know, really locate the baseball where he wanted it to. So I think all three outings these past three weeks have challenged him in different ways, which, just makes you a better pitcher because as a starting pitcher, probably 30% of the time you feel great. You've got all of your pitches in your back pocket and your command's great. Normally something's off. Uh, your body doesn't feel great. Your command's not great. Or you don't have your slider. You don't have your change up. And I think it was good for Root to have to go through these three weeks because there's going to be other times this year that he doesn't have his best stuff. Coach Ryan McChrystal had a you know huge hit in the UNCW game. Uh, you know, swung a miss twice, but then made an adjustment, got that go ahead hit. Just what have you seen from Ryan getting more consistent playing time, but also making the most of his opportunity? Well, he sent me a really awesome text message, uh, you know, Saturday night, which I won't reveal all of it, but he's been really consistent with his processes for about a month now, doing his daily schedule and. You know, I met with him a month ago and just said, hey, what have you done consistently over an extended period of time when it relates to baseball? And he, he was honest with me, which I think that's the first step and goes nothing. Um, and I said, hey, we got to sell out to something, whatever those three or four things are, whether it be, you know, getting extra hitting in, watching your highlight video, reading your daily devotional. But um, he's played a lot more freer because he's told me that, you know, with – me speaking about my faith and him diving into it a lot more that has allowed him to just not worry as much, not have as much anxiety and to go up to the plate and just play freely. So, you know, that's really what we hope for all of our guys is just to be able to go out there and play freely. And you mentioned earlier, Chaz, with the big swing uh, against UNCW and, and he had a, you know, he was a guy who had a great off season and maybe, you know, struggled a little bit early. Is he a guy, along with maybe Colby Wallace, a few others we could see, you know, continue to get more and more playing time, especially, you know, bringing some right-handed punch in the lineup? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, you know, we faced a lefty that night, and um, um, we felt like it gave him an opportunity to play first base. And I think he will continue to get opportunities. Cam Clonch will continue to get opportunities. Colby Wallace will continue to get opportunities. Luke Nowak will continue to get uh, opportunities um as Walker Barron you know I think those are 
uh, really good players, man, that, you know, they're getting their opportunities. It's not as much as I'm sure as they would like, but they've been great teammates to this point, and um, it allows them to go in there and play to the best of their ability. I mean, you look at Colby, what he did coming off the bench on Sunday, which you can say, well, you guys had a four-run lead when he came off the bench or a five-run lead, but, man, he makes an unbelievable play at third base. He hits a double, um, actually made two really good plays, uh, one, uh, which was a bang bang play at first base, kept the no hitter alive at that moment. So um, I thought that was a really crucial play and a big time play. We're uh, talking to Pirate head coach Cliff Godwin, ECU baseball with a four and zero week. They moved to uh, four and two in the AAC. Uh, coach, as far as um, great teammates, uh, he was on Stephen's show. He'll be on with us tonight. Cam Clanch uh, and uh, one of the seniors that. Uh, you know, his, I, I know had an open dialogue with you about uh, his season, and he's someone that has a lot of uh, respect of a lot of his teammates, all of his teammates. Uh, a little bit of Cam's role, and, uh, and, and you know, it is tough to kind of stay sharp and stay ready when uh, maybe you're in that position and you're a veteran guy. You know, Clanch has been a great teammate. He's uh, one of the most respected uh, players Um in the standpoint of the entire team, not just the position player group. I mean, if, if Clanch speaks up in that locker room, people listen. And it's because they know that he really, really cares about East Carolina baseball. He wants to win. He works hard at practice. Um, and he's a cool dude. I mean, guys like being around him. So he's kind of the, you know, the unicorn from a leadership standpoint. Um, so guys really respect him and he's just been such a breath of fresh air to coach this year because he definitely wants to play more. I mean, look, that's not a secret by any means, but he also wants to win. He wants his senior year to be one that is remembered. And I think that has been a neat thing for me to be around. Um, I've said this before, but nobody understands uh, the situation that Cam Clutch is in more than me because I was a part-time player uh, 95% of my career. So, um, I get it, you know, and I think that's one reason God put me in a position to coach is to understand what guys go through when they're not guys that are out there. Coach Knight and I were talking this morning just about our players, and, you know, I think that our players sometimes think that we think about the guys that are playing every day the most. We actually don't as coaches. We're thinking about the guys that don't play every day the most because we're trying to figure out how we can help them to, you know, help them with their pitching or help them with their hitting or help them with their defense or help them with their mental game processes, whatever it may be to allow them to be the best version of themselves. And, you know, it can get lost in the shuffle. I think when you're in the season that they can think that you don't think about them, but we think about those guys more than we think about the guys that are running out there every day. Coach, uh, NC state tomorrow night, there'll be a lot of emotion there. There's the Makarevich uh, factor as well. Uh, that uh, obviously is going to be discussed. You're going to be asked about it. We're asking you right like now. You're the first one. Uh, I knew it was coming. I didn't know it was coming right. this morning, but yeah, it was knew right. it was coming. And, and look, yeah. I, I just want to say this, and I want everybody to hear it. I, I don't have any ill will towards AMAC. I'm glad he's having a great year. Um, I probably would have handled some things a little bit differently um, back in the fall. I, what I would say is I gave him everything I had, every ounce of energy, compassion I had until the end. And Obviously, I was hurt when he left, but it looks like he made the right decision. He um, has played more freely, so I guess I did hold him back. That was not my intention, so I wish him the best, man. And, uh, yeah, I want to win the game, but I have no ill will, will towards AMAC, and I hope he has a great rest of the season, um, but we still want to win the game. It's going to be another one of those uh, instances, too, before we let you go, where um... – it would be a big crowd, big environment, that sort of thing. you you, you got to be hyped. This is what you come to East Carolina to play, and I know these are – you're intense every game, but these are probably the fun games to coach, too, in a way. I just want our guys to go out there and compete at a high level. Of course, it'll be a great crowd. Um, NC State's got a great team. Coach Avent and his entire coaching staff do a great job with their players. Um, it'll be fun. You know, this is – what college baseball is all about. It's a rivalry game. It's at their place. Um, they're good. We're good. So it'll be uh, it'll be fun to be a part of. Hey, Coach, thanks for the time. As always, we really appreciate it, and uh, we'll uh, look forward to catching up with you this evening. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Cliff. Appreciate it, Cliff. See you guys in a little bit. All right, man. All right. See you. Take care. 
All right.